right? Yeah, it's called the Big Chicken Bun. Hi, I'm Trig Brown, and I'm from Winsun Restaurant and Bakery, and today we're gonna make a big chicken bun. I'm a little hungover today, to be honest with you. I'm gonna have a beer. Uh, <laughs> to get started making the big chicken bun, we gotta make a marinade for the chicken. I have some ginger, some garlic, and scallions. I'm gonna cut these guys up into sections. For the ginger, I just take a little spoon and peel it. Winson is a Taiwanese American restaurant. My business partner, Josh Ku, and I met at a barbecue in my backyard, just talking about food and Taiwanese food in particular. Been cooking since I was 15, but I grew up right outside of Richmond, Virginia. His family is from Taiwan. Just started uh, eating a lot of Taiwanese food together and techniques I was learning as I was like researching the dishes and sometimes recreating them at home. They resonated with me. Shio koji, it's fermented rice mixed with water and salt. Very common ingredient in Eastern Asian food. Mirin, some sweet rice wine, and a little bit of light soy sauce. Chinese spice spice, key ingredient. When it's in the marinade and when it goes on top of the hot, crispy chicken skin, it really like perfumes the chicken and has this like any sweet flavor that takes you right back to Taiwan. White pepper, I just love ginger powder. We're gonna put a tablespoon of sesame oil in there. This is great. We have like a thick, viscous, liquidy marinade that will coat the chicken, break it down really nice. All right, so the, uh, the marinade is finished. We're going to clean up and break down the chicken. We're gonna kind of get four, four pieces out of this for frying. We're gonna get two breasts and we're gonna get two legs with a thigh attached. You don't have to get whole chickens. Um, you can definitely just get whole breasts. But I like to take the legs off, pop it out along the backbone so I get all that meat. The legs off, and we're gonna take the breasts off really carefully. So I kind of like to follow down on the breastplate and it'll kind of naturally pop off. I also like to do whole chickens because I can use a lot of the necks and the backs for stock, the thighs and the legs go to the bakery. So it's just more sustainable, the right thing to do. I'm gonna open it up from over here, right under the breast. And that's gonna be the basis for our sandwich. This is a little bit more of like a technical cut. You're just kind of following along the bone. I'm gonna just use my fingers up in between, cut that sinew right off. I'm gonna pull it up, right, and pull it off the bone. You know, it didn't cut through the fat, so you have this like chicken curtain. I marinate a lot of chickens at Winson, so I like to be really careful, and a little goes a long way. Just taking some of the marinade, I just roll this leg right back up, nice and neat, so it stores nicely. Kind of like enchiladas, right? Josh's good friend is a director. He just wanted to make a commercial with us. Cut to the video right now. Hey guys, this is Josh from Winston Restaurant. Come on down and try our famous big chicken bun. There's no tricks up our sleeves. Just great food at a price that feels like magic. Ah. While the chicken's marinating, we're gonna uh, make the mayo, fermented bean curd, tofu. It's fermented and stored in a chili dressing. It's kind of like a blue cheese. It's called dofu roux. A little uh, shiradashi, it's dashi and white soy, essentially. And this is kewpie mayo, which is the best mayo, in my opinion. It tastes like ham. So now we're gonna make the herb salad. Super simple, mixed up scallions and cilantro. Slice the scallions. With the cilantro, I actually like to start off with the stems, kind of cut them like chives, go really thin. You know, only did like a restaurant become a reality for us after we had done, you know, all of this research and case study in Taiwan. We were just having fun and like smoking weed and eating Taiwanese food. I like reading history books. My main source of learning and understanding for Taiwanese food. You know, if you can contextualize dishes and ingredients and kind of grasp where the food's coming from and why it's a certain way. Or... So Taiwan's like a big like history lesson for me. As like a guy from the South, fried chicken is something that you know I've always eaten. Uh, Josh told me that one of his friend's moms would make fried chicken sandwiches with uh, Taiwanese fried chicken and bowl about. The bowl about is sweet, so we have this kind of sweet salty combination with our sweet Taiwanese you know, bowl about and the fried chicken. Let's start frying our chicken. We're gonna uh, make the breading for the chicken. So cornstarch and rice flour. It's two to one. This is a pretty strong dredge. We want it to look like wet paint. So you want it to be pretty loose, but uh, have that kind of like viscous nature to it still. The cornstarch and rice flour, it's like cement. It thoroughly covers the chicken. It really does a good job of uh, acting as an adhesive for the sweet potato starch. But it's funny, if you put too much water in there, it can get too thin really quickly. 
So we just made the wet dredge with the cornstarch and rice flour, and the dry dredge is the most important ingredient in Taiwanese fried chicken, sweet potato flour. So this is the chicken that we have that's marinated overnight. Drag it through the slurry, make sure it's nice and covered, let it drizzle off, and then just drop it in. Pick it up. So I'm just putting on a glove so I can uh, not get gross sweet potato starch fingers. I don't know if you guys are used to frying um, or you know, launching things into hot vessels of oil, but you never want to fill up your oil more than halfway. Start by dropping it in and then just land it. Give it a nice lift off so it doesn't cook on the bottom of the pot. I would fry it for like seven to 10 minutes. I want it to be nice and golden brown and cook through it. Because we butterflied the chicken and it's super thin, it cooks pretty quickly. This bubbling is good, it means that the chicken is frying. If it's not bubbling, then you fucked up. I also like to turn it just to make sure it's getting nice and evenly cooked. So we're gonna let it let it rest. When the five spice hits the chicken skin, you can, like smell the cinnamon and the star anise. Um, uh, I hate this question. It's Szechuan peppercorn, fennel seeds, and yeast. Cinnamon is um, typically in Chinese five spice. It really depends on where you're getting the five spice from. I just use the same brand. And I do a little cayenne pepper as well, and it makes it a little spicy. I'm gonna toast up this bowl of bao. I actually just use the mayonnaise. Put that right in the skillet. Bowl bao is a uh, super popular and uh, nostalgic pastry that you'll find at any Chinese bakery. What's nice about the bowl bao, since it's a sweet pastry or sweet bread, um, you kind of get that salty sweet flavor combination going and it's very much like a, like the chicken and waffles vibe. The chicken right on top. I like to liberally apply this mayo because it's like a uh, adhesive for the herbs. You know, so I like to put a lot of herbs on here. I always cut my fried chicken in half. It's the uh, big chicken bun. Super balanced, salty, sweet, a lot of herbs. Mayo's not crazy, but definitely there. It's really juicy. When Josh and I started talking about the restaurant, creating our menu and our version of Taiwanese American food, we're gonna have this like fried chicken be like uh, a bridge for cultures. It's gonna resonate with Americans and people that don't know what Taiwanese food is, and it's gonna really resonate with Taiwanese folks that have eaten you know, big chicken at night markets. So for the recipe, click below or come over to the restaurant and have a sandwich with us. Would you eat chicken sashimi? <laughs> um, do you want to try it? I have not had it. I was curious as to if you would. Okay, I think one. Oh. Um, all right.